Looking is looking good. But pop. Colour posters. Star collector pages. Funnies. Fashion competition. ITV favourites. You won't get a looking if you don't get looking every, every week. week. Hello, I'm Retro Steve UK, and today we'll be taking a look inside this issue of Looking Magazine from the 2nd of April 1983. <laughs> if you're of a certain age, you'll remember that Looking was a weekly magazine aimed at young teenagers, which was marketed as a junior TV Times. In reality, it was an entertaining mix of TV based comic strips, news articles, features, pull out posters, competitions, puzzles, activities, kid friendly TV listings, and of course, adverts. Lookin had a 23-year run, published by Independent Television Productions Limited, between 1971 and 1994. I started reading Lookin from the age of about nine in 1983, so it's always had a special place in my memory, and reading these old issues now, years later, provides one of the strongest nostalgia hits I've ever experienced. The contents of these mags are like a time-capsuled snapshot of the things that we were all into at that time. And the aim of this video is to tap into that nostalgia and share a little trip together back to 1983. There are a total of 32 pages in this issue. The front cover features E.T., the extraterrestrial, and a free pair of cardboard anaglyph 3D glasses. These were stuck to the cover over E.T.'s eyes, and as you can see, whoever originally owned this copy didn't follow the remove glasses carefully instruction, and poor old E.T. is now permanently scarred. There's also the usual hints as to what's coming up in this issue, the date of release, and of course the price tag, a pocket money friendly 20p. The equivalent now in 2024 would set you back around three or four quid, albeit in full color and on glossier paper. Turning to the first pages, there's no actual contents listing here, but we're introduced to the concept of 3D with instructions on how to make it work with the free glasses and a little history lesson on the subject. These 3D images are scattered throughout the pages of this issue, and they should be viewable in 3D on screen if you have a pair of those old red and green lensed glasses. To make it easier, I'll be showing all these 3D pictures in a quick slideshow after we've finished flicking through the magazine. On the right, the Here You Are section features contributions from readers who've sent stuff into the magazine, by post of course, there was no internet back then, including drawings, photos and birthday listings. I suppose it's possible one of you watching right now might have been on these very pages. Pages 4 and 5 contain a short comic strip. Rock on Tommy with Cannon and Ball is a good example of one of Lookin's comic interpretations of popular celebrities and TV shows of the time. Cannon and Ball of course being one of those comedy double acts that were massive on TV back in 1983. Next page has news and features on Marmalade Atkins, a Razzmatazz, and a Bond film that was showing on TV that week. And there's a curious little single strip comic at the bottom called Hubert Windpipe & Co, which was actually an advert for Bubbly Bubblegum, which could be purchased in sweet shops for the princely sum of 2p. On the right, we're treated to another 3D picture and an article, proclaiming the arrival of a new action TV show from America called Knight Rider. Yeah, you might have heard of this one. It's actually fascinating to read their excited description of the show at a time when not many people will have seen it or even heard of it. Another TV based comic strip in full colour this time. This one's based on the adventures of stuntman Colt Seavers, played by actor Lee Majors in the TV show The Fall Guy. Lee Majors was also famously known for playing the physically enhanced Bionic Man in the Six Million Dollar Man TV show. Page 10 has an offer we just can't refuse. There's a chance to win one of 15 computer battleship games by unscrambling the jumbled names of five different seas. I can't get any of these if I'm honest, mainly because I suck at geography. If you can get them, go ahead and post the answers in the comments. No prizes this time though, it's just for fun. On the right is the fun assortment page with a great selection of puzzles, jokes, conundrums, and oddly, a comic strip about Tony Blackburn's dog. The puzzle answers are also included, but you'll need to stand on your head to read them. Over the page, and it's another black and white comic strip. Murphy's Mob isn't one I actually remember from the TV, so I had to look this up. It's about a group of young football fans who try to set up a junior supporters club for their local team, Dunmore United. I checked out the theme tune as well via the magic of YouTube, and it's a pretty wicked punk rock track. I actually do remember the song, but nothing about the show, weirdly. And the theme tune was superbly performed by Gary Holton, the actor who played Wayne in Off Feeders Ain't Pet. 
Page 14 has the obligatory TV listings, in keeping with Lookin being a junior TV Times, plus a column about a TV pick of the week, which they've decided this week will be the televisation of a musical stage show called Doubting Thomas, about a character from the Bible at Easter time. On the right, another 3D image and a little blurb about the E.T. movie, and some thoughts on the film from a handful of celebrities from the day. These articles are the introduction to this week's pull-out poster on the next page, which of course is E.T. himself. The E.T. blurb continues over the page with an account of reader Joe Armstrong from Newcastle-upon-Tyne, who's seen E.T. at the cinema more than a hundred times. That must have been some pretty cheap cinema tickets back in 1983. We also get another 3D image to enjoy, and some more comments from celebs. Joe, if you're still out there, let us know. Did you really see E.T. that many times, and are you still a fan? The TV listings continue on the right here, which would be visible in full once the poster pages are removed, and a reader's letter section called What's Your View? Every letter published wins the writer a £5 postal order and a special junior reporter's certificate. A nice bit of motivation there to get writing in. Another comic strip over the page, this one based on Starfleet, a Japanese puppet show similar in style to Terror Hawks. It was dubbed into English and aired on a Saturday morning kids TV slot. Pages 22 and 23 contain a double page spread about volleyball, with pictures and interviews with Britain's two top players at the time. I guess if you're a sports nut this would have appealed, but the highlight for me is the Boots advert in the bottom right with a low price offer for a Scripto erasable pen. I remember we used to go mad for erasable pens, as it always seemed quite magical, the idea of being able to erase ink as easily as if it were a pencil and an eraser. The next comic strip, and again this time we're treated to full colour, is Danger Mouse. And what can I say about Danger Mouse that you don't already know? Only one of the best and most memorable children's cartoons from the 1980s, with some timeless voice acting from Terry Scott and David Jason, among others. Fantastic. Adam Ant graces the next page with a lovely big 3D image and an awesome list of facts about the man himself, including his real name, birthday, height, weight, etc. For fans of Adam and the Ants at the time, this would have been a goldmine of information, considering the lack of internet access. Everything we knew about anything back then was gleaned from books and magazines. On the right, we have a selection of fun paper folding activities to do in your spare time. This is also a bit of a promo for a book called Paper Fun from Beaver Publishing, as the activities were extracted from that book. Pop band Box Fizz get their own comic strip on pages 28 and 29, a band that were massive at the time, after winning the Eurovision Song Contest for the UK in 1981 with what became their hit song, Making Your Mind Up. I remember being a fairly big fan of them at the time, so this strip would have been one of my favourites. As far as I'm concerned, they were the UK's ABBA, and deserve appropriate recognition for that, although I reckon a lot of you will probably have other ideas. The last two pages before the back cover consist of news, articles and adverts, as well as the final panel teasing what's still to come in next week's issue. There's a fantastic little snippet about CGL's version of Nintendo's Mickey and Donald Game & Watch handheld. CGL were officially licensed to distribute these for Nintendo. Under that, an advert offering free stamp collecting packs. Probably too good to be true and a way for the company to get your info and get you hooked on more stamp collecting gear perhaps. Top middle is the news section about some up and coming TV shows. Bottom middle we have the results of a reader poll about your favourite look in features. Probably useful information for the publishers, although to give them credit they were offering more £5 postal orders as prizes. Well done to Sharon Woods, Victoria Lane and Stuart Lowry. There's a little article about leisure fashions promoting clothing for sale at British home stores and the coming soon panel promises more 3D pictures, a Yamaha keyboard competition and more of the usual favourites so don't forget, as they used to say in the adverts, to look out for Look In next week. The back cover rounds off the experience with a promo for Look In's holiday special spin-off magazine, bursting with colour, facts and fun. And there's also an advert for Dentine chewing gum down the bottom with a Spot the Difference competition in which you can win one of a hundred apparently puncture-proof footballs. What a time to be alive. As promised, here are all the 3D images from this issue scanned in and full screen for ease of viewing. If you don't have the right glasses or you just want to skip this bit, you can use the chapter markers on this video to go straight to the next section.
So that was Looking Magazine from the 2nd of April 1983. I never kept any of my original lookings, so this was one I picked up at a retro film and comic convention. They are quite cheap now to pick up on eBay for as little as one or two quid, so I recommend grabbing yourself a copy for a real blast from the past nostalgia hit. Now I'm planning to do more of these What's Inside videos at some point as part of this channel's ongoing content, so watch out for those. And if you're a Rent-A-Ghost fan, there's already a video exploring the Rent-A-Ghost annual from 1983, and you can follow the link to that at the end of this video or from the video description. I asked for your thoughts about looking in a post on the community section of my channel and a few of you were happy to share your childhood memories. David Brown used to read Lookin' in the early to mid 1980s. He recently remembered a TJ Hooker article in Lookin' while talking with his wife about William Shatner in his latter years. Cool Hand Luke still has some old camcorder footage of the Mr. T poster on his wall from one of the Lookin' issues shown in the photo that I shared. Opal Guy remembers reading Lookin after he stopped getting the Beano. He still has several copies in the loft and a framed copy of an issue with Toya Wilcox on the cover up in his man cave. GT Retro World remembers that specific ET issue with the free 3D glasses like it was yesterday. Two Purple Shadows noticed that someone didn't obey the instructions to remove the free glasses carefully, leaving ET with a bruised nose. And Andrew Barrett, at Fat Northern Bigot, remembers the Knight Rider 3D images practically jumping off the page and was pleased to see Mr. T on the cover of one of the issues in the photo. If you have any more thoughts or memories to share about your experiences with Lookin', I'd love to read about it in the comments below. And if you'd like to be featured in a future Retrospectives video, follow me on my various social media platforms where I'll be asking for comments whenever I'm working on something new. I also have a buy me a coffee tip jar if you'd like to say thanks with a small gesture. You'll find all the links in the video description. We'll finish off now with a couple of old looking TV adverts, but first I'd like to thank everyone who shared their comments, to thank you for liking and subscribing, and of course to thank you all for watching Retrospectives. Gentlemen, we have the capability to make the world's first bionic magazine. Look in. The only magazine with Bionic Woman as a color picture strip. Now follow Janie Summers every week in her thrilling adventures. And look in as well for more Bionic excitement with Steve Austin, starting a brand new $6 million man serial. Don't miss Oscar's Bionic Twosome. They're together every week only in Look In, the world's first Bionic magazine. He's pinched my look in and given me this to read. He said I shouldn't be spending all my time reading about Steve Austin, Space 1999, and all my other TV favourites. I don't even get to read the sports stories, the pop features, or do the great competitions. He's been sulking since those girls kicked him out of that flat. <laughs> uh, you finished that one, have you? Nearly. Look out for looking every week. It's your last chance to get a picture postcard from a star with this week's Look In. Don't miss Look In for your ITV favourites and superstar postcard with a signed message. Nick Kershaw is on the cover of the latest issue of Look In. Inside there's an exclusive interview and double page colour pinup of a fast moving star. Sports Spotlight investigates football for girls. While the fact file focuses on Michael Pride, TV's Robin of Sherwood. The new Look In, out now. Free in this week's Look In. Six more Back to the Future album stickers. Plus, the A-Team, Cannon and Ball and other ITV favourites only in Look In. Look In is looking good. For pop, colour posters, star collector pages, funnies, fashion competitions, ITV favourites. You won't get a Look In if you don't get Look In every, every week. week.